Hi everybody, this is Mr. Folly, and welcome to Podcast 8.1. We're going to define stoichiometry, explain and interpret coefficients from balanced equations in terms of atoms, molecules, form units, and moles, know that coefficients are not mass, and define endothermic and exothermic changes. So let's hop right to it. Stoichy watery <laughs> stoichiometry is the mathematics of chemical equations. So this lets us predict how much product you're going to get, figure out how much we need. So if you're in Breaking Bad, how many barrels of methylamine you need to make your crystal meth and kill people and all those other things and then get shot. Still haven't. I'm only in season five, so I don't know how it ends yet. We need to know if we start with 50 grams of salt and 3 grams of cracker, how many cheeses can we make? So I don't know how many grams of salt are on a cheese it What if it is uh, 45 grams of salt on each cheese it Can I make three cheese its No. So that helps us figure it out. Stoichiometry needs a few things. It needs a balanced equation, a given amount in grams, liters, or molecules, and then we need to find out what we're looking for. If I have one mole of CH4, how many moles of O2 are needed? So here's a balanced equation. So if I have one mole of CH4, how many moles of O2? So notice how this is 1 and this is 2. So for moles, coefficients are directly proportional. So one mole of CH4 would need two moles of O2 because this could be moles. If I have one molecule of CH4, how many molecules of, CH, of CO2 form? Well, this is kind of crazy too because it could also be molecules. Now, and remember, if there's no number, it means there's one. So one molecule of CH4 would be how many molecules? One molecule of CO2. If I have two moles of O2, hey, look, there's two moles of O2. How many moles of H2O form? Look, there's two here. Would give me two here, two moles of H2O. And since we know this, now here's where it gets crazy. Seven moles of O2, how many molecules of CO2 form? I can do it up here, there's more room. Seven molecules of O2. You can see how I can use that balance. These are equivalencies, so 2 equals 2. So that means 2 moles of O2 equals, whoops, I'm doing CO2, not moles, molecules is what we're in. Ah, erase, erase. 2 molecules of O2 and 1 molecule of CO2. So 7 divided by 2 is 3.5 molecules of CO2. Hey, look, that's the stuff we did last time. I like that. Our test grade was awesome. Coefficient ratios work for moles. They work for atoms. Or they work for molecules. They work for formula units. They do not apply to mass grams. So what that means is um, 10 grams of CH4 does not correspond to 20 grams of O2. No, 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 no. Made me throw up my mouth a little bit just saying it. Endothermic means taking in heat. Endo means inside, so your endoskeleton is inside your body. Endo, heat goes into or inside a reaction. Right? So it will feel cold because if I touch it, so if this is my little reaction and I touch it with my finger, it takes my heat and it goes into it, so it will feel cold. The heat term would be a reactant. That means it would be on the left-hand side. It would absorb heat, and the symbol delta H would be positive. Delta H, so you say delta H. Delta H is a measure of the internal bond energy. If delta H is positive, the reaction is endothermic because the molecules are, I'm going to change that molecules, the reactants are gaining energy. Positive energy, it's gaining energy. Exothermic. Exothermic heat goes out of a reaction. Exo means out. It feels hot. So again, if this is my reaction and I touch it with my really long finger um, and heat's coming out of it, it will feel hot. And I'll go, yikes, that hurts. The heat term would be a product, so this thing is releasing heat. Delta H would be negative. So examples of exothermic reactions, um, burning the witch, exploding, that's not exothermic, but that's okay. Identify the following as endothermic or exothermic. Look, heat is a reactant. It's endothermic. Look here, heat is a product. Exothermic. Look here, heat is a reactant. Endothermic. <gasps> Delta H is negative. 
exothermic. So to recap, it is endo if heat is a reactant. And it's endo if delta H is positive. Okay? And heat can be in the form of the word heat or the units for heat are kilojoules. Endo or exo. Look, it's positive. Endo. Look, heat is a product. Exo. Look, it's negative. Exo. If I do this and the temperature drops, so that means the temperature drops on this guy. So what that means is my reactants, right here, its temperature is going down, right? So it is losing heat. Its temperature is dropping because it is losing heat. That means it is exothermic. For fun, Nick is cool. Is he endo or exothermic? Hmm, if he's cool to the touch, if we touched Nick and poked him in the eye, and it was cold, that means he is absorbing our heat. So Nick would be endothermic. Ethan is hot. Whoa. Is he endo or exo? If he's hot, he's releasing heat. He's exo. Review. Mathematics and chemical equations is stoichiometry. You should be able to say it. Coefficients are ratios of moles and atoms of formula units. Exo releases heat, feels hot, delta H is negative, and heat is on the right. Endo absorbs heat, feels cold, delta H is on the left. And that is it. I forgot to play my music on the end. But I did not forget to say, toodles.